Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video, we're going to be setting up a system whereby our workbench is going to be acting as an upgrade for our mech character. So what I mean by that is if the player walks up to this bench, they are going to see a message which says upgrades here, press E to interact. And then, if they do press E, then it's going to open up a widget blueprint, which is going to contain the body of our shop. So today's video is going to be covering the functionality for getting the bench to display the text, and then set up the input opening the shop. And in the next video, we're going to be setting up all of the graphical elements to make our shop look pretty. And then the video after that, that's where we're going to be moving on to the functionality to allow the player to upgrade their mech character. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. So one thing I do want to mention is there is going to be a few different blueprint classes that we're going to be working with. First and foremost, we're going to have our third person character, which is going to be containing the variables and the logic for opening and closing the shop. You're also going to have a second blueprint for the workbench. And with this workbench, you're also going to have collision. And if you go into that collision, it's going to allow you to press E to interact with it. Or if you walk out of it, you are no longer going to be able to press E to open that shop. So let's go ahead and start off by creating the very first thing we need to do. And that is two variables which are going to be powering all of this. We are going to be handling all of this inside our third person character. So go ahead and open this up. And then within here, we're going to create a boolean. This boolean is going to have the name is at bench. And then you want to set your variable type to boolean if it isn't already. And then go ahead and hit compile and set the default value to false. So like I said, this boolean is simply going to tell us whether or not they are within range of that bench. What we're also going to have is a second boolean, which is going to tell the engine whether or not they already have that shop menu open. And then we can hook this up into our condition so it doesn't try to open it twice. And if they've already got it open and press E again, we can actually close that menu. So what we're going to do is give this boolean the name already open. Go ahead and hit compile. And once again, we are setting the default value to false because we don't want it already open by default. Once we've done this, what we can do now is move on to creating the blueprint for the bench itself. So go ahead and delete the bench that you've got in your scene already. And then from here, we're going to go to our content browser, add a new blueprint class of a type actor, and we're going to give this the name workbench, and then open this up. So let's start off with the physical representation. We're going to add a component, and then with this component, we are going to be adding in a static mesh. This is physical, this is a 3D model. Go to details, and then underneath your static mesh, you want to search for your workbench. And what this is going to do is bring your workbench model into your level. So go ahead and hit compile and close this. What we can do now is actually bring this blueprint for the workbench into our scene. What I'm going to do with this is simply rotate it 90 degrees and I'm also going to scale it up just a tiny bit. And what you should have is something like this in the center of your player base. Moving on from here, the next thing we need to do is simply create a bit of text which is going to be displayed above this workbench saying upgrades here, press E to interact. Now the way we're going to be doing this is by adding in a component for text render. And as you can see here, I've now brought that text into our blueprint and I can bring this up just like that. Now what you will notice is at the moment if you stand behind it, behind it you're not going to be able to read it. We're actually going to be setting up some script to get these elements for the text render to actually always look at the player so it looks like it's floating. So the text, what we're going to say is simply upgrades here. And I'm going to capitalize that as well so it stands out and it's really, really clear. So upgrade here. And then once I've done this, 
What I'm also going to be doing is simply changing the size of this. Now, the way that I'm going to be changing the size of this is really simple. We've got our X scale and our Y scale. We're going to be setting this to 2 and 2. And as you can see here, this is now nice and big. What we can also do with this is set a render color. So at the moment, it's this weird blue. I'm going to make this nice and white, as you can see here. Bring that brightness all the way up. And from there, we are good to go. Within our actual level, with lighting on it, is it is going to look white. Now, what I'm also going to have is a second text render component. And with this, this is just going to be going beneath the first one and this one is going to simply say press E to interact just like this so make sure you spell it press E to interact just like that and then with this we're going to be bringing it over to the center of upgrade here and then with the text color for this one we're actually going to be using a light blue to make it nice and clear as you can see here if I go ahead and hit compile and then hit play to go into my game here, you can see that text is really nice and visible. Now bear in mind if you walk behind it, you can't read it. That is something that we're going to be scripting in a moment. But with this text here, it is very clear to see that this is what you're going to be using to interact and upgrade your character. So with that done, what we also need to do is set up our collision telling the engine whether or not the player is within range of this bench. So what we're going to do is go to our viewport and then in here we're going to add a component and this component type is going to be box collision. And then with this we are going to make this nice and wide and we're also going to make it nice and lengthy as well and we're also going to give it a little bit of height. Now, we only want this to trigger within a reasonable range of this bench, so you don't want to make it too big and you don't want to make it too small. You want to cover a slight outside area outside of that bench as well. And the best way to gauge this is to actually look at it within your scene. Is the player going to be able to walk within that area? If they are, then you're good. If it's too close, then it's going to be difficult for this player to actually get within that collision. So going back into our workbench, we can actually work on the code for this. Also, what you want to do with your box collision is make sure that generate overlap events is checked and your collision preset is set to overlap all dynamic. So moving on from here, let's set up the code for telling the engine whether or not the player is within range of the bench. So what we're going to be doing is going to our box and then with this, we're going to create a begin overlap event. We're going to select that box again. And then we're also going to get an end overlap event. So if we begin overlapping it, we are going to set that Boolean that we created earlier to true. If we end the overlap, we're going to set it to false. And to be able to do that, we need to access it. So we need to cast to our third person character. And we're going to do this for both of these for end and begin overlap. The object wildcard is going to be get player character and then we're going to hook this up into both of those. Now as third person character we are going to be setting is at bench and then we're going to hook this up into the execution pin for both of these and then from begin overlap we're going to be setting this to true and then from end overlap, we're going to be setting this to false. And that is the logic for checking the distance all set up and good to go. What we can do now is move on to the logic to get the text render to actually follow the player. So it's always going to be looking at the player and it's always going to be easy to read. The way that we're going to be doing this is by giving us a bit of space, taking our event tick and simply writing a little bit of code. This code that we're going to be writing is simply going to set the rotation of these text renders. So set world rotation and the rotation that we're trying to set is our text render. And for the new rotation, 
what we're going to be doing is finding the look at rotation and the world location, which is going to be our start point, is what we need to put into here. So what we're going to be doing is getting our text render and we're going to get the world location. That is our start point. Our target, on the other hand, is going to be our player character. So the way we're going to get this is by simply getting the actor location and the target is going to be get player character. And then this is going to do what we need it to do. Now, what we're also going to do is do the same thing for the second text render. So make sure your references are correct as well because we've got text render and text render one. Make sure you're using the right one. So if you're using text render at the top here, you want to make sure you're referencing text render here and not the second version. So we're going to copy all of this code and then we're just going to paste it in. And then all we're going to do is just simply replace the references from text render zero to text render one. So it's going to move both of these. Just hook it up into your targets just like that. So now what's going to happen if we go ahead and hit compile and hit play is if we possess our upgrade here text is going to be spinning around and you're always going to be able to see that it says upgrade here. Now, while you're walking around this bench, you're going to notice the text is going to be moving away from its original position a little bit. And what we're going to have to do to counteract that is simply open up our workbench. And then with our workbench, we are simply going to set the alignment because it's going to be moving these text renders on the rotation around the origin point, which is currently the bottom left for the text. And this is why it's looking a little bit odd. So with your text, all you want to do is go to your details panel and then set your horizontal alignment to center and do the same thing for your vertical as well. So text center. And then all you're going to do is reposition that in the center and do that for both of these horizontal alignment center and then vertical alignment text center as well and just move it across. If you go ahead and hit compile and hit play and then jump into our game, you are going to see it looks a lot nicer now when it rotates around the way that it is. So that is the physical representation for all of this setup and good to go. What we can now work on is the input, getting the shop menu to pop up and display on the player's screen. So what we're going to do is first and foremost, create an action mapping for trying to open up this menu. We're going to do this by going to edit and then opening our project settings. And within here, we are going to be using the proper method of setting up a input event. Within here on the left hand side, go to input action mapping, and then press the little plus to add one. We're going to give us the name shop menu. And then within our shop menu, the key binding for this can be anything you want. For me, I am going to be working with the letter E as that is what I have put on my text render. So once that's done, what we're going to do is go ahead and close this and we're going to go back to our content browser. What we're going to be doing in here is we're going to be creating a new user interface widget blueprint, which is going to be used for our shop menu. Now, bear in mind, we're not going to be putting anything in it at the moment, as that is going to be something that we're going to be covering in detail in the next video. We're simply going to give us the name shop menu. And then within our shop menu, we're going to put a text block in here for testing purposes. So we know if it's open or not. And we're going to set this text to visible. You can set this to anything you want. You can spell it incorrectly just the way that I have. It's entirely up to you. But you just want to know that this shop is easy to see and it is on this screen. I'm going to anchor this to the center for now and I'm going to make the text size nice and big as well. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and close this and then move into my third person character to actually get this displayed on the screen. Now, what we are going to be doing to make this nice and easy is when you actually begin playing the game, we're actually going to be loading this shop menu onto the memory. And then we're going to be adding it to the viewport, but setting it to hidden. And then whenever they press E, 
all we're going to be doing is just simply changing the visibility of this widget that we've created. So, having said that, at the end of our sequence for begin play, all we're going to be doing is within here, we are going to be creating a widget. The class is going to be our shop menu. And then we are actually going to be promoting this to a variable that we can easily reference later on. And we're going to give this the name shop menu. So go ahead and do that now. So with the variable name, right click it and set this to shop menu. So now we've done this, what we can actually do is go ahead and add this to the viewport of our screen. And we can actually test this really easily by hitting compile, hitting play, and what you should have when you hit possess is that debugging text saying visible on our screen. So we know that's all good. Let's move on to the next step. The next step is going to be setting the visibility of this to hidden. So what we're going to do is set visibility, set visibility, and then the target is going to be our shop menu. And then the invisibility is going to be hidden. So what's going to happen now is if we go ahead and hit compile, hit play and hit possess, it is no longer going to be there. So what we're going to do now is some simple code. This code is going to check to see after you've pressed E whether or not our bench is already open and if they're within range and if they are then we're simply going to be setting the visibility of this widget to true and if they press it and it's already open then it's going to set it to hidden so let's do that give yourself some space at the bottom and then what we're going to do is open up our shop menu action event and on pressed we are going to be running a branch check this branch check first and foremost is going to see if the player is at the bench. So get is at bench, hook it up to your condition. And if it's true, then what we're going to be doing is simply checking another branch, which is simply to check to see whether or not they already have it open. So this is where we're going to be feeding in our already open. And then with this, what we're going to be doing is writing all of the logic to make this hide and show on the screen. So what we're going to do is start off from true. So if it is already open, then what we're going to be doing is setting this to invisible. We don't want it on the screen anymore. So what we're going to do is set visibility for our item that we're talking about. Now to be able to do that, you want to get a reference to shop menu and then simply set visibility. And then we're going to hook this up into our true. And then for the invisibility for here, because it's already open, we'll press an E. This is essentially us trying to close it. So we are going to go ahead and hit hidden. So now that we know that this is hidden and taken away from the screen, what we're going to be doing next is actually removing the mouse cursor. So what we're going to do now is cast to our player controller. And what this is going to allow us to do is to take away the mouse cursor from our screen because if they're working with a menu and they're upgrading, they're upgrading their character, you're going to want to see the mouse cursor. If you're closing it like we are, we're going to be getting rid of that mouse cursor. So as player character, we are going to be setting our show mouse cursor to untrue. For the object wildcard for player character, get player controller and then just hook that up just like that. Once you've done this, what we're then going to do is set already open to untrue because it is no longer going to be open. And then lastly, what we're going to be doing is getting a reference to our character movement component. And we are going to be setting the movement to walking. The way we're going to do this is by choosing the correct option for this, which is set movement mode. And then the new movement mode is going to be walking and you want to go ahead and hook this up just like that so that section is done that is going to get rid of our shop menu from the screen and it's also going to remove any impairment to movement because you don't want the player to move while the shop is open and it's also going to get rid of the player's mouse cursor on the screen moving on to false we are going to be essentially doing the opposite 
So we are going to be taking our set visibility. And then with that set visibility, we're going to be setting this to visible because we are trying to show this onto the screen. And make sure your target for set visibility is our shop menu. What we're also going to be doing from here is setting our already open to true. So we can set up the logic for these branches so it's not going to open itself twice. So set already open true because we've now opened up this menu onto our screen. What we're going to do from here is cast to the player controller just like we did before and then simply set show mouse cursor to true this time because we want to add the mouse cursor onto the screen. Object wildcard for the player controller is going to be the same as before, get player controller. And then the last bit that we're going to be doing is simply getting a reference to our character movement again, but this time we're actually going to be disabling the movement so the player cannot move their character when they have got that shop menu open. If we go ahead and hit compile, hit play, what we can do now is test this. So we can run around as normal, we can see our upgrade here text, and if I'm close enough to this and press E, it is going to say visible on our screen, that is our shop menu. And you'll also notice that the mouse cursor is now being shown as well, and I cannot walk. If I press E again, the mouse cursor is going to go, the shop menu is going to disappear from the screen, and I am free to walk around and continue killing the bots. So that is everything that I wanted to cover in today's video. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.